everybody, welcome to Crackback Tuesday, number 166 on the Manalik. I'm John, as always, and we've got ourselves another pack of Guilds of Ravnica here. This, of course, is a sponsored uh, crack pack. If you want to get into the sponsored crack pack, you can join patreon.com slash manalik at the $5 level or above, and you'll get your chance to uh, randomly be chosen to get all the cards or whatever cards you want out of the pack each week. This week, it's going to Stardust KL, but let's crack this pack and see what's in it. See what we would take. Pack one, pick one, if this was a draft. And boy, this is a... Uh, a sealed pack. There we go. Up first, we've got ourselves a 10th District Guide. 10th District Guide is one and a white for a creature human soldier. A common, when it enters the battlefield, target creature gets plus zero plus one until end of turn. It's a 2-2. Two, two. It's not terribly exciting. It's also very bright in here. Maybe I should turn off this light. That's a bit better. Uh, it's not super exciting. It's really mediocre. The Boros deck wants just more impactful creatures. It's not a first pick, and it probably shouldn't make your deck usually. Up next is Leapfrog. Leapfrog is two and a blue for a creature frog. Uh, it gets flying whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, and it's a 3-1. Totally fine if you're in the Is It deck. Uh, it, it can be nice and aggressive. You could even uh, sneak this into some Demir decks. It's a relatively filler card, however. Definitely never a first pick. Up next is Fearless Halberdier, two and a red for a creature human warrior. She's a 3-2, and that's all she's got going on. There's nothing else. She's a vanilla 3-2. Uh, if, you, if you're desperate for a creature in a Boros or in whatever, this is fine as a filler creature 23rd card. You never, ever first pick this card. Up next is Sworn Companion. Sworn Companions is two and a white for a sorcery. Create two 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens with lifelink. It's fine. Um, I, I typically prefer other creatures in my Boros decks. Uh, this is a little bit slow. These things have to be mentored in order to get good. Um, so I, I prefer something a little bit more impactful. I'll certainly play it, but I'm never first picking it. Up next is Dowser of Lights. Dowser of Lights is four and a black for a creature horror. It's a vanilla four or five. There's nothing else going on here. It's uh, it's fine. It's actually been surprisingly okay-ish. Um, I've seen people be really high on it. I've seen people be like, this is actually the second best common in black, and I don't know about that. Um, I have to play with it a little bit more, but it blocks Boros really well, because it actually eats Boros, unlike your Walls of Mist, unlike your uh, Walls of uh, Vines, or whatever they're called. Um, they're, 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 they, don't, they don't kill the creature. This kills all the Boros creatures, uh, generally. So, not a first pick, but going up in the rankings, for sure. Up next is Urban Utopia. Urban Utopia is one and a green for an enchantment aura. Uh, enchant land. When it enters the battlefield, you draw yourself a card, and the enchanted land has tap. Add one mana of any color. Uh, this is okay. There's better ramp. I, or Sorry, this isn't even ramp. This is fixing. Uh, this does not tap for two mana, like uh, similar cards that we've seen do. This is, uh, this is, this is fine. This is uh, fine, but it's definitely if you've... Um, you know, missed out on circuitous route and things like that. So, uh, definitely not a first pick. Up next is Iron Shell Beetle. Iron Shell Beetle is one and a green for a creature insect. It's a 1-1. One, one. When it enters the battlefield, target creature gets a plus one, plus one counter. It could be itself, it could be another one. Uh, this is fine. If you're in green, which, uh, generally isn't recommended in this format, green is potentially, uh, uh, unplayable as I've heard, and, uh, you know, you don't, you don't want to go into it, but if you're in it, this is a card that you want to pick up, and it's fine, but it's never ever a first pick, especially because of Green's current uh, distaste with most players. Up next is Muse Drake. Muse Drake is 3 and a blue for a creature Drake. It's got flying, it's a 1-3, and when it enters the battlefield, you draw yourself a card. This is fine. I was a lot higher on it when I first saw it, but it has underperformed a little bit for me. Uh, the 1-3 the just quite isn't powerful enough, but I'd still play at least one copy of these in every blue deck that I'm playing. It's just they've dropped in the pick order. Uh, rather than being like a, a, a very happy kind of 5th or 6th pick, they're more like a 8th or ninth pick now for me. And I would play the first one happily, but the second one I have to start questioning a little bit. But not a first pick. Up next is Gateway Plaza. Gateway Plaza is a land. It's a gate as well. It enters the battlefield tapped. Uh, you have to pay a generic mana or else sacrifice it when it comes in, but it does tap for any color. It's Rupture Spire, but a gate. Rupture Spire is not good in Limited. This is not good in Limited. I would prefer strongly to never play this card if I can. There's better ways of fixing. Get the actual gates. Get the things where you don't have to use a mana when you play this for the first time. Get better stuff than Gateway Plaza. Gateway Plaza is if you're really stretching your mana base and things didn't go well. Never a first pick. 
And uh, that brings us up to the uncommons, which means we do have a foil in this pack, because I do believe that was nine commons, not ten. And we're still without a first pick. Golgari Raiders is three and a green for a creature elf warrior. It's got haste, it's a zero zero, but it has undergrowth. It enters the battlefield with counters equal to the number of creatures in the graveyard. This card's awful. This card does nothing if there are no creatures in the battle er, in the graveyard. You you can't you can, but you should not play this card. There's actually an article on the uh, on the uh, the Wizard's Mothership about how they prefer not to print cards that don't do anything in some situations, but they did with this one. And, uh, yeah, you, the cards are never really that good. I don't like Golgari Raiders. I think it's aggressively mediocre. I really dislike it. I never want to be first picking it. I prefer to never be playing it, not just because it's green, but also because it's not great. Our next uncommon is Whispering Snitch. Whispering Snitch is one in a black for a creature vampire rogue and uncommon. It's a 1-3, and whenever you surveil for the first time each turn, it uh, drains your opponent for one life, so they lose one and you gain one. This can work really well in multiples. Unfortunately, you cannot guarantee multiples. On average, there's 0 0.9 copies of this or any given uncommon in a draft pod. So if you do get multiples, then good for you. You lucked out. But be aware, you got lucky. That's not a normal occurrence. That's not an average occurrence. Uh, but even the first one's okay-ish. The Surreal deck is definitely strong. Disinformation campaign is shockingly good. Um, and Whispering Snitch is a, a part of that. Uh, I, I prefer other stuff. I don't think I'd first pick a Whispering Snitch. I guess it's technically the best card we've seen so far. So let's have it hang out in the uh, in the frame and hope that the Uncommon, Rare, and Foil under here are better. Hey, it is better. Bye, Whispering Snitch. Up next is our last Uncommon, Legion Guildmage. Legion Guildmage is red, white for a creature human wizard. It's uh, a 2-2. Two -two. You can pay 5 in a red and tap it to deal 3 damage to, target to each opponent, or you can pay 2 in a white and tap it to tap target creature. This thing's amazing. This is uh, possibly one of the best guild mages, if not the best guild mage. The 5 in a red is just a game ender. Um, you know, that's 6 damage over a, uh, uh, an opponent's end step and your upkeep. So if they're, point, if, you're, if they're at six or less, they're dead if this is on the board and you have six mana. So it's very scary. And before it gets there, it's a tapper. This card's fantastic. I love it. I would happily first pick it, especially because Boros is one of the better decks in the format. So definitely staying in frame. Our rare is a Zoni Thousand-Eyed. Two black, black, green, green for legendary creature Elf Shaman. It's a 2-3. It has undergrowth. When it enters the battlefield, you do create... Uh, X11 one, one black and green insect creature tokens uh, for each creature in your graveyard and you can pay black and a green and sacrifice another creature, not Azoni itself to gain a life and draw a card um, yeah, Azoni's good if everything goes to plan, unfortunately it's hard to fill your graveyard with creatures, I think people have started to discover that with Golgari and, uh, and the undergrowth mechanic in general and yeah, there's just so much inconsistency with this card. If you're not getting at least a few insects off of this, you're massively overpaying. And the sacrifice, oh, that's nice, but boy, I don't know. I, I don't think I'd ever first pick a Zoni. I would happily first pick her in pack three when I found myself in Golgari, but I don't think she's even in the question in this pack. So let's see what the foil is. Holy moly! The foil is a foil Vraska. Um, so Frasca is a uh, legendary planeswalker for plus two. Let's uh, let's uh, look at this closely for plus two You may sacrifice another permanent if you do you gain one life and you draw a card Minus three destroy target non land permanent with converted mana cost three or less Minus nine you get an emblem with whenever a creature you control deals combat damage be aware combat damage to a player That player loses the game Vraska's pretty darn decent. She's not an amazing planeswalker. She doesn't easily protect herself. We've also got a Golgari Guildgate here. She doesn't easily protect herself because, you know, she can only kill a 3 CMC creature or less. And her plus two, you do have to sacrifice something if you want to get the life and the card, but you can sacrifice a land, which makes her a really good late game. But on turn four, she's not that amazing. So she's actually not like a stone cold bomb planeswalker. But I think she is still really good, and so I think we'd still be first picking her in this pack over Legion Guildmage. If it was the Pro Tour or something, 
Legion Guild Mage might actually get the nod here, but FNM, we're taking the Vraska, especially for value. So anyways, let me know what you would have taken in the comments down below. Would you have taken the Vraska? Would you have taken the Legion Guild Mage? Would you have taken the Azoni or, or something else? Let me know in the comments down below. As always, this is a sponsored crack pack, so these cards are going to go out to Stardust Kale. I assume she might want this one. Who knows about the other ones, but that one, probably. Um, so if you want to get in on that, you can go to patreon.com slash themanaleek and become a backer at the $5 level or above. If you like the content, uh, or sorry, if you do have any questions, comments, or suggestions, I forgot my own outro, you can find me on Twitter at the TheManaleek, that's L-E-E-K, like the vegetable, not the card. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash TheManaleek, uh, Twitch at twitch.tv slash TheManaleek, and patreon.com slash TheManaleek, as I just said. If you like the content, click that thumbs up button, click subscribe if you want to see more, and if you do have questions, comments, or suggestions, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you all next time.